I think everybody by now knows that the EV revolution has arrived and many investors, analysts are searching for the EV battery material supply chain for opportunities to get exposure to this mega trend. Of course, everybody knows that lithium and lithium stocks have been soaring since they came out of the lows in 2020. But investors are wondering, are there other opportunities? What are the components within lithium ion batteries and that broader EV battery supply chain? And where are the opportunities? Well, today we're going to discuss the EV battery supply chain. We'll talk about some of the key components and then we'll unpack five different companies within the EV battery supply chain, five ASX EV stocks that could be worth watching moving forward into 2022. Of course, it's a fascinating sector that continues to evolve and there are many moving parts, but hopefully this is an interesting starting spot for you to go away and have a bit more of an idea about the space and where you could start looking within the sector. I think before we explore these five stocks to watch over this upcoming period, it makes sense for us to take that bit of a step back and have a think about, okay, electric vehicle batteries, what are they actually made up of and what are investors looking for? First and foremost, I think lithium's the easiest one. Everybody's seen the price signal for the lithium market over this past period. It's continued pushing higher and higher and higher. We know that there has not been a huge amount of lithium supply that's come online after the bust of 2018 and 19. And so as a result of that, as demand continues to rise, as the EV adoption picks up pace, lithium has really been in short supply. But much broader than that as well, just for the purpose of discussions, conventionally the batteries that have been developed are called NMC batteries. These are nickel, manganese and cobalt. Of course, there's a range of different batteries as well. Tesla uses NCA, which has aluminum. And of course, there's a lot of discussions about LFP batteries. But for the purpose of this discussion to help to simplify it, the cathodes, which is one component of it, is predominantly made out of nickel, cobalt and then manganese. And then the other side is the anode, which is traditionally made out of graphite. Of course, as we continue to see technologies develop, this is going to change, compositions are going to move, but hopefully for, for an ease of discussion, that's a good starting spot to wrap your head around it. And so before we dive into these five different ASX EV battery material stocks to watch, it is worth noting they'll be across five different sectors. So hopefully it's a good starting spot and an insight into some of the different supply and demand drivers for those sectors. But it's also worth noting the current state of play for the markets. As we talked about, the lithium market continues to push higher and higher and higher. The underlying price has really soared well above the highs that we saw in 2018, and so far it's showing no signs of stopping. Of course, this won't go on forever into perpetuity. Eventually there's gonna be a supply side response, which we're starting to see now, but we all know about the supply chain bottlenecks. We know about the difficulties to start these operations. And so at the moment, the price has continued pushing higher. Another interesting component on the other side as well is that for the first time in nearly a decade, lithium ion battery cell prices have actually started moving higher. The costs have continued to go lower and lower and lower over this past period. The technology has got better, the processes and flow sheets have improved, but due to the input costs that have started to rise over this past period, we've seen that first increase the other direction. It's worth noting, of course, nickel, cobalt, manganese, key components of this. And there's many other factors, but hopefully it helps to give you that insight about what's playing out in the space. If you do enjoy this video as well, don't forget to hit the like button. If you're new here, make sure you've subscribed. Turn your bell notifications on as well. You won't miss any of our daily episodes and we'd love to have you join the community. And I think the final visual here that's worth looking at is of course underlying EV demand. Now this is over the past decade to 2020. We're still waiting on 2021 figures, but if you've been reading the newspaper articles, if you've been looking at publications and videos around the world, you'll know that the EV adoption has truly arrived. Of course, we know that some of the key regions, China, as well as Europe, but the United States are really trying to get their act together now. They're looking at onshoring and localization of supply chains, as well as, of course, starting to ramp up production. Initially, we know that Tesla has been a bellwether and a leading light for the sector, but more and more we're seeing significant investment and commitments from these incumbent vehicle makers that they know that the EV revolution is here and they don't want to be left behind. It's a fascinating sector with a lot of moving dynamics. Let us know your thoughts. So drop in a comment below what you think about the space, how you're trying to get exposure to the trends, and what are some of your favorite companies within the sector as well. Just a reminder too, before we dive in, I'm just a bloke on the internet who loves talking about stocks. I'm obviously not a financial advisor. Nothing we discuss is financial advice and the stocks are not buy recommendations at all. They're hopefully just an interesting starting spot for you to go away, give you a bit more of an insight and to do your own research from for the sector.
And so stock number one on the list is Renascore Resources. ASXRNU has had a rapid start to 2022 to say the least. We've started to see price signals across the graphite sector as well. As we mentioned earlier in the video, the graphite anode is a key component and there's a lot of eyes on the opportunities that graphite producers can have as lithium ion battery demand continues to move higher. Renasco Resources has gone from the low teens in terms of share price to above the three, the 30 cent mark. It's now over 500 to 600 million dollars worth of market cap. And some of these key dynamics is it's the world's second largest proven reserve of graphite. It is the largest graphite reserve outside of Africa. It's got cost competitive advantages due to the makeup of their resource as well. And ultimately they're trying to develop a vertically integrated supply chain. So from mine through to PSG, purified spherical graphite production. It is worth noting that Renasco Resources Civia project is located in South Australia, so it's a tier one jurisdiction. They've been granted major project status, which of course is significant. And just recently they were granted conditional approval from EFA, the Export Finance Australia for $185 million loan. So these factors go some way to de-risking the project. They did put out an announcement recently, but of course this is just the current backdrop that they're sitting in as well that they've got higher yields and higher prices than initially forecasted. This is of course exciting investors as they move towards FID or final investment decision. They're hoping to be a nearish term producer as they move towards construction as well. And with such a large resource, there is the opportunity for potentially increased throughput and resource upgrades as well. It's worth noting that they've currently got signed up to 60,000 tonnes per annum of offtakes. Investors are looking for these or the potential to sign binding offtakes in this upcoming period. And of course, there's a range of leading global companies with POSCO really top of the list out of the Renasco compilation. And then stock number two on the list is American Rare Earths. ASX ARR has had another rapid start to 2022. Their market cap is now above the $150 million market cap level. There's been a lot of catalyzed growth from some of the announcements at a national government level over in the United States. American Rare Earths, as you can probably tell by the name, ARR has their projects, three different projects located in the United States. Of course, if we think about the backdrop for the Rare Earth sector, the majority of production for the Rare Earths is currently done within China. Of course, there's a focus on localization of supply chains and particularly for critical minerals of which Rare Earths are and have been designated as. And so they've got their flagship La Paz project. This is located in Arizona. It's already a large resource. It's a 170 million ton Jork resource. However, they're really looking at doing further drilling, which has commenced there to expand that current resource. They're also looking at bringing online a maiden drilling program at the moment for their Hallett Creek project. This is in Wyoming. This is commenced to start within the first quarter of 2022, so not far away. And then they have Searchlight as well, which is their third project, which is much earlier stage. As we've talked about, there's a focus on US localization. There's not many potential rare earth projects at the moment in the United States. Of course, the ability to feed into this, particularly with Joe Biden's discussion surrounding the critical minerals and how they want to make sure that the rare earths that have been produced and provided to defense contractors and other types of programs within America are coming from US based opportunities. This means that companies like American Rare Earths and any others can feed into a significant opportunity if they can bring their projects online in years to come. And then the third company on the list is Arizona Lithium. ASX AZL is really feeding into many of the similar themes that we've just talked about with American Rare Earths. Of course, Arizona Lim Lithium were formerly known as Hawkstone. They're looking to commercialize their flagship Big Sandy Lithium project. Commencement of the scoping study. This is located within Arizona, as you can tell by the name Arizona Lithium. At the moment, they've got a maiden resource of potentially producing up to 320,000 tons of lithium carbonate. But what's really fascinating here is only 4% of their land holding has been drilled, which gives them a 12 year mine life currently there. Of course, they're looking at further approvals and going to drill further. But if you think about the scope, potentially what could be laying under, it's quite an interesting and compelling opportunity. So investors will be looking for further exploration and information about how that plays out. In terms of their process as well, it's an extraction via sedimentary clays. It's quite a simple mining process, which of course investors like to hear. Their initial flow sheet work has now been complete, so they can move forward to the next stage, which is the development of a research facility. As we've just talked about with American Rare Earth, US location, located within the NA supply chain, of course not too far away from Tesla's facility too, which is a big tick and excites investors. And they've got around 250 to 300 million dollar market cap now. So they've had another solid uplift over this past period. 
Of course, as you'll notice with this video, we're just having a high level discussion from these range of companies, looked into many of these previously with other videos on the channel that you can check out after this one. And we'll leave links to those that you can check out after this video too. Stock number four on the list is Queensland Pacific Metals. ASX QPM is developing their tech project in Townsville. It's quite an interesting project, particularly if you think about the range of components that will eventually be developed. The materials are quite broad, but predominantly focusing on the cobalt and nickel opportunity. As we mentioned, NCM batteries are at the moment quite the focus for these EV producers. So the tech project will be producing battery grade cobalt as well as nickel. But there's a range of different byproducts that are developed and produced as well as part of their direct nickel project. Process. This includes hematite as well as magnesia and ultimately the opportunity to refine a high purity alumina as well, a HPA. So there's a lot of fascination about what Quake QPM could develop. The tech project was also recently confirmed as carbon negative, which is a big tick. We all know that, of course, OEMs, manufacturers are looking to bring down their embodied energy of their ultimate productions. And so projects that are carbon neutral or in QPM's case, potentially carbon negative, go some way to bringing down that embodied energy. They're trading in a similar-ish market cap level to what we've discussed previously, around that $250-ish million market cap level, trading around the level where they recently raised capital, around $30 million, and they are currently working towards a DFS for mid-2022, which of course attracts a lot of investor interest, particularly with the elevated nickel prices that have continued rising over this past period, which will be an input into this feasibility study. They do have conditional financing support of $250 million from EFA plus other agencies. And most notably as well, they've got offtake and investment from a couple of these big global players, LG Energy Solutions as well as POSCO. And so this goes some way to de-risking the project, particularly because these companies have of course done their due diligence, they've done their vetting and they see something exciting about the QPM tech project. And then last but not least is Navonics. ASX NVX is a name that many EV battery material investors might be familiar with over this past period. Novonix has been flying the flag for the ASX EV battery material space. Their market cap is currently around the $3 billion mark, but they were trading much higher over these past few months. Of course, the NASDAQ listing has attracted a lot of investor interest as well and provides them with potential exposure to much broader capital pools, as well as US investors, along with their US operations that they have. But they're really looking to bring online in their near term, their pure graphite which will be the first qualified US synthetic graphite producer. They've got a range of notable partnerships, most notably and most recently, they've signed a supply agreement with Core Power, as well as taking a strategic investment stake within them. Of course, Samsung and Sanyo are a couple of companies that they're in the early stage partnership development as well for some of the graphite. And recently, Philips 66 as well took an investment into Novonix, developing out a strategic partnership, looking at the potential for further downstream anode material production as well. And along with this, it gives them a more sustainable supply as well as for their coke as a key input into the development of their synthetic graphite. With Novonix, it's quite interesting. Of course, they've got a significant battery technology solutions, research and development component. They are doing a lot of the testing and a lot of the research and working with a lot of these EV battery materials companies in the US and broader than that. It opens up the EV ecosystem because they get visibility across what's happening in the supply chain, where are the opportunities, and where can we leverage our understanding, our in-house capabilities to continue to amplify and double down on the mission that they're doing. Further to that as well, further research and development, they're looking into the cathode side and their Amira partnership gives them some opportunities to explore the broader energy storage systems. Novonics really do have that opportunity to be a key component and feed into the NA value chain. There's a lot of excitement about what ASX MVX can do. As mentioned over this past period, we've looked into a range of different ASX EV companies. We'll leave links to the playlist up above that you can check out, as well as some of the other interviews with ASX Lithium, ASX Graphite company CEOs. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out. If you're new here, welcome. We make daily videos each and every day. So make sure you've subscribed, turn your bell notifications on and drop in a comment. Let us know what you thought about the video and which companies you've got on your watch list. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope you enjoyed it. And for now, stay well and happy investing.